We bought the original house in McKinnon in 1991. It was an 85 square metre 1940 weatherboard that was an oven in summer and a fridge in winter. Its overall performance wasn't improved by ceiling insulation and changes to room layouts, breeze paths, etc. So we decided to demolish and start again as owner builders. Tim was an avid reader of the owner builder and earth garden magazines and we both loved earth houses. So could we build a 160 square metre rammed earth house with solar PV and hot water, double glazed windows and ceiling fans in suburban McKinnon? Why not? Demolition of the old house took place in 2000. Dynamic Design in Stratford drew up plans after several conversations to elicit our needs. The site constraints included an M-class site with moderate clay and fill, a massive stormwater drain reserve to the east which couldn't be built on, and lastly a recently declared flood overlay which meant the plans had to be redrawn and we missed our walling contractor slot. We got through all these obstacles and moved into our new house late in 2001. Owner building can be difficult and complicated but also interesting. The house, 23 years later. Our house has lasted well. It was based on a good design that still excludes the sun in summer and allows it to warm us in winter. The sun has also supplied us with electricity for about 23 years in three iterations of PV solar. The first system supplied by solar charge was small, about 1.4 kilowatts with a 2.5 kilowatt inverter. Another 0.9 kilowatts was added to this in 2015 along with a small battery system of about 5 kilowatt hours with 2.5 kilowatt hours available. The PV was replaced in 2017 to bring it up to 4.86 kilowatts. The AGM batteries were then changed to lithium in 2021. They were also supplied by solar charge. That was giving us 6 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. All this was controlled by a 4.5 kilowatt Celectronic Pro installed in 2015. We've been off gas for a few years now. We have an induction cooker and an electric oven, and we cook meat and fish outside on the barbie. The main living area of the house is heated and cooled by a heat pump, a 2018 split system. It works well and costs virtually nothing in summer but is undersized in winter and costs a lot to run when there is little PV to be had. There is a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries unit at the south end of the house that gets used very infrequently, is very quiet and was installed in 2014. Hot water is provided by an earthworker reclaim system that is whisper quiet and uses virtually no electricity. The house has needed painting, but mostly the UPVC double glazed windows have not required any maintenance. We have added external shade lines to better control solar access, believing it is better to stop the sun from hitting the window at all in the summer. The accessible bathroom and toilet have been remodelled and changed from non-slip vinyl flooring to tiles. The kitchen was rebuilt in 2016 when the gas stove was ditched. The old one is now in use at a house in Lansfield. The garden. We asked our designer to maximise views to the garden and this is a real feature of the house. There has always been a veggie garden in one shape or form since we've been here, except during the building process. Our large peppermint gum in the driveway is a registered tree with a local council and a family of 20 frog mouths take up residence in the tree, but unfortunately not last year. We are keen to keep as many of the bigger trees as possible, particularly with the continuing loss of greenery in the area due to overdevelopment. We have, a, we have tank water capacity of 17,000 litres fed by water from the house and, roof and shed roofs. We have one large raised garden bed and three small wicking beds that make it easier to look after the garden. We use a small greenhouse in autumn and winter to grow seedlings. We are constantly adding bee and bird friendly plants and using netting more often to protect the plants and produce from the local pests. So what have we learnt from living in this house? First, build small. It is cheaper to heat and cool and easier to keep clean. Then build an efficient house that keeps the sun out and warmth in winter. 
The money you save from a small house can be reinvested in better quality appliances that last longer. Use permeable services that don't act as a heat bank in summer and prevent trees from getting water. And finally, have a garden or some sort of green space. It will keep the surrounds cooler and make you happy.